Hello, everybody. Welcome to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR. I thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord. And thank God for you tuning in today. Instead of me singing, I'm just going to get right into the message. I've been prayed up, fasting, and prayer. And the Lord gave me a message for the church today. And I didn't know what I was going to call it. I was going to call it the message behind the message. I'm going to make it simple. The Lord told me to really make it simple and called it. To call it this, heaven is coming to your house. Thank you, Holy Ghost, and love you, Lord Jesus. And today when I was praying and when I was uh, with some very dear friends of mine in the Lord who are family to me, Caroline, Cindy, and Hayden, I, I was uh, hanging out with them and a matter came up that I think needs to be addressed in the church today. So we're going to talk about that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you don't like me exposing things, get off the line. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And when Jesus came, chapter 19 of Luke, verses 5 through 28. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is going to be a full, in-depth teaching, and I'm going to tie it into another message in just a few months, and I'm going to tie it into something even deeper than just a little bit of a message here. This is going to be a full-length teaching on the Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord. Luke 19, verse 5. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at your house. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Heaven is coming to your house today. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. And Jesus said unto him this day, wait a minute, verse 7, and when they saw this, they all murmured. Now he received him, and he made haste and came down joyfully. Thank you, Holy Ghost, and received him. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone down to be a guest with a man who was a sinner. Was a sinner. Look at that. Past tense. Was a sinner. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The man that is a sinner. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love the Lord Jesus. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto them, thank you, Holy Ghost, and love the Lord. He said, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and the other half that I have taken wrongfully, I will give back to the person I stole it from for a fold. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He says, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto them, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything, thank you, Holy Ghost, from anybody by false accusation, I restore it to him fourfold. Which really, if you look at that, is seven times. It was seven times greater what he had stolen. The Bible said that they'd be caught is to give it back sevenfold. So, he was given back by giving everything. He gave up everything that day. He gave sevenfold, not even realizing it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation. Come unto your house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus was on a mission from heaven to rescue a relationship with God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. And as they heard, I ain't getting jiggy with the music. I'm just <laughs> trying to wipe the microphone off and you're hearing that feedback in the background. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. And they heard these things he added and spoke, thank you, Holy Ghost, and he spoke a parable unto them. Because he was not to Jerusalem, near Jerusalem, and because they thought 
the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And really, if you notice the parable, I'm actually going to break the parable by the Holy Ghost down for you that he taught me. And you are going to be blown away by the Holy Ghost tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went down into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And then to return back. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He was saying, I've not come to rule and reign just yet. But thank you, Holy Ghost. He left heaven to come to a far country, this earth, to go and seek out a kingdom. The Bible said, Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer that the kingdom of heaven is within men. The day he prayed in the garden, he said, for the kingdom of heaven is within man. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. So the kingdom of heaven is within man. He came after souls. He came after people. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for so much. And he called to his ten servants, verse 13, and they delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He's referring to his first coming and his second coming. Thank you, Holy Ghost, and love you, Lord Jesus. He's referring to the first time I come, I'm leaving after I find my kingdom. Shet total vocals say and then I'm going to give you gifts unto men. The word pounds is not even originally there. This is the King James, y'all. But the original King James says talents. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I give you a talent. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Occupy till I return. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. And he called his ten servants and gave them talents. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But his citizens hated him and sent message after him, saying, We will not have a man, this man, reign over us. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, thank you, Holy Ghost, this is after the rapture. This is the catching away of the church. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And it came to pass that when he had returned, Having received the kingdom, that he commanded his servants and called unto them to whom he had given the talent, thank you, Holy Ghost, or the money, that he might know how much every man had gained, had gained by trading, thank you, Holy Ghost, the living Lord Jesus. Giving freely, we have received the talent, freely, we have received of the Spirit. Freely we are to give, and we're to get back an investment of souls, friends. That's what it's talking about. Thank you, Holy Ghost, and love you, Lord Jesus. We are to give out of ourselves freely and get back through that trading agreement a soul for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost, and love you, Lord. Somebody, if you're not winning souls for Jesus, the Bible said he who wins souls is wise. Thank you, Holy Ghost, and love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Have gained your five, your, uh. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound has gained ten pounds. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because, uh, Thou hast been faithful in very little. Have thou now authority over ten cities? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Every, because I in, have favor with ten cities. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. I won five souls. One, one, ten, one, one, five. Hey, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. One, one, ten, one, one, five souls. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities, over five nations now. These are evangelistic people. God is sending them out to do the work of an evangelist. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love the Lord Jesus. For I feared, now wait a minute, 
And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is the pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For I feared thee because thou art a God, thou art a, a strier man, a strict man. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is one, I'm going to get into this in a minute. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the message within the message. Heaven has come to your house. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Before God will ever judge the world, know this, he will judge his house first, friends. People, Jesus is a God meek and mild, but he ain't no mamby-pamby Jesus. He is a strong Savior. His hand is not short and it cannot heal, but it's also strong enough to hit the devil around you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God is not after you. He's after the devil. God is not out to destroy you. He's out to destroy the devil that's in your life. He wants to give you a new life, a hope, and a future, a plan perfectly made. God's not mad at you. He's mad about you. But he is constantly at war with sin. So we've got to understand that God is alive with power and mercy, friends. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you mercy right now. I'm going to show you how God is merciful. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For I fear thee, because thou art a, a sure man. Thou takest up, then thou layest not down. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And reapest that which thou did not sow. He accused God of stealing from his own people. He said, God, you've not cut me a fair deal. You have cheated me. And God says to him, thank you, Holy Ghost, he wasn't even going to judge him for not winning souls. He judged him because he opened up his mouth against the Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. He said unto him, out of this own mouth, on your own mouth, I will judge you, thou wicked servant. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thou knewest that I was a just man, taking up that I laid not down, and read, oh, wait a minute. Wherefore then sayest not thou, wait, 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 wait. thank you, Holy Ghost, amen. He said unto him, out of thy own mouth I will judge thee. Thou wicked servant, thou knows that I was a just man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. He's saying, you're accusing me of this, huh? You're accusing me of this, is what he said. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And he said unto him, Thank you, Holy Ghost, the living Lord. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money, thou my talent, thou, why didn't you bring what I gave you to anybody? Why didn't you make an investment for me? that I could invest in their life instead of yours. If you don't want to serve me, why did you take the time to come to me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible said we are to count the cost. It's talking about our soul. What will a man give? What's the price a man will pay for his own soul? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. This man paid five pounds for his soul, spiritually speaking. He lost the five he could have won to Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And because of his mouth, he lost his own soul. I thank you, Holy Ghost. He blasphemed the presence of God and said that God was an unjust God. He accused God of being evil, and God said, I'm through. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible said if you consider it evil to serve God, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether it be the God of your fathers that you knew before the flood, hallelujah, before, before on the other side of the Dead Sea, or after. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said if it be evil for you to serve God, choose another, he said. But choose ye this day whom you will serve. Behold, I lay before you life or death, blessings or curses. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. It's about an option. It's about serving the one who died for you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Verse 23. Wherefore then gave not my money into the bank, 
that in my coming I may have required my own with usury. I may have inquired use for this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound and give it to him that hath ten pounds. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love the Lord Jesus. When he gave up his crown, the Bible said in Revelation chapter 3, Make sure no one steals your crown. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How come he lost his crown? Because he was found wanting when the master came home. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Heaven is coming to your house today, friend. Are you ready to be able to give an account? If Jesus were to come today and ask you, what have you done with your life? Are you going to be found guilty or innocent? Are you going to be found wanting, hiding your head in the sand like an ostrich in your soul? Or are you going to be standing and giving your life to God? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. And they said unto him, He who hath ten pounds, for I say unto you that every one which shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he that shall be taken away from him. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Them preachers who saying, Give, says the Lord. Give, 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 give. God will give you this miracle if you'll give this X amount of dollars. That is a blasphemous lie. God never said that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Freely you have received of the Holy Ghost. Free, I bless you, Lord. Freely give. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So he said, I'm going to strip their kingdom. Eddie L. Long, Joyce, uh, Eddie L. Long, all of these other women preachers and, and men preachers. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. Eddie L. Long, Paula White, all these people have begun with Nita Bynum. They begin to fall away because of one reason. They got cocky in the glory, and they begin to prophesy things that God did not say. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So God stripped them of their rights of royalty. Help me, Holy Ghost, I like that. I want to preach a sermon called the Rights of Royalty. Remember that one, y'all. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. But those, thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. But those my enemies, which would not that I should rule over them, bring hither, a, bring hither, and slay them before me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. People say that that looks like the Muslim way. If you won't follow me, then die. That's not what he was saying. He's saying, if you're not going to follow, thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. If you're not going to follow me, God was saying right there, basically drawing a line in the sand, if you're not going to follow me, then I'm not going to make you. But if you don't want a ruler in your life, if you want no rule, you are out of order. Friends, thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. People say that the law is done away with. If that's the truth, then God is gone. Because the Bible said he is the law of God. The law of grace. Yes, we understand that, but grace is not grace. We cannot sin and keep sinning and expect to keep being forgiven. We must have a change in our life. I thank you, Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord Jesus. Basically, he's saying, follow me. But if you won't, then death will come. There's no other option. You either have life or death. God is not wicked. God is not evil. The reason that man in the story died, they call good evil and evil good in this generation. Friends, God is not evil. My God was going to give him mercy till he opened his mouth against God. Every man will give an idol and a cover every idle word, friends. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm sweating as I'm preaching this message. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. But those my enemies who will not that I serve them, bring them a sword, bring them here, and slay them before me. This is a parable, friends. Jesus never really was talking about killing anybody in front of him. But he wanted them to get the picture you're going to follow me or you're not going to follow me. That's what he was trying to tell them. 
Either you're going to follow me to everlasting life or you're going to die without me and follow yourself into everlasting destruction. It said that the man feared God. Can I say this right here? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank God he is my permission. I have his permission. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. A lot of people are going to fear God straight into hell, friend. They're going to be afraid of God and they're going to go right into hell of fearing him because they never use the gift of God. And the gifts of God go without repentance, friend. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now that I've discussed that, I want to discuss something a little bit even deeper that goes along with this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Why is the church preaching lawlessness now? Do you know if you look at the Bible, there it looks like there are actually scriptures missing now. Why? Because the enemy is trying to confuse the minds of people and making them think, well, maybe I don't know the Word of God. Why? Because there's been so much supernaturally happening, there's a blinder being put over the eyes of the unbeliever that they may believe a lie and be damned. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the Word of God. Listen to me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Why? Because the Bible says in the book of Daniel that in the last days... The Bible says in the book of Daniel in the last days that, that in that day he will change the laws. He'll change the law of the land. He'll change the mentality of the atmosphere. The devil is after the mind, friends. So the Bible said, God said, I've written my word. The Bible said that he has wrote his heart, his word, his law is written in the heart of man. Why? Because the Bible said in the last days men's earthly hearts would fail them because of the things they're seeing. Why? In their spiritual heart, their spiritual heart will fail. Why? Because the law of God is not written. Hey, I thank you, Holy Ghost. Is not written upon their heart. And Jesus said, thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord. Jesus said, or well, the Bible says, we're to put our mind on things above and not things beneath. Why? Because of one reason. Because even earthly things, the Bible, they're changing scripture, they're twisting the word of God, they're changing it. Supernaturally, people are misreading the word of God. Or they're being made to feel like they have not read the word of God. They're being made to feel less than. Do you know what they're even doing right now with CERN? I believe it's in Europe or something. Help me, Holy Ghost. I think it's in Europe or France or somewhere like that. CERN. Let me tell you, they said on their website that they are trying to open doors to fallen angels. They are opening their doors to the Nephilim. Why is everything happening? Why are things missing that should not be missing? Even in the Word of God, sometimes we cannot find things that we knew were there because the enemy is messing with the atmosphere. But as long as we know the living God and the living Word of God, we're going to be okay, friend. Get ready. Look up. Pack up. Pray up. We're going up, baby. Jesus Christ is coming again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Get your heart right. The Word of God is infallible no matter how many times people try to change it. The NIV, the KGV, whatever. The NIV, I mean, thank you, Holy Ghost. Whatever is being changed or trying to be rearranged, God said in the book of Revelation, their names will be taken out of the book of life. I had a dream. Yeah, I'm going to be Martin Luther King here, a white Martin Luther King. No no, uh, ten, no, in, no, offense intended there. I love Dr. Martin Luther King, everybody. I'm just being a little bit funny right now. I've been out all day. My mind is just at rest. So when I get rested, I get silly. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. I have a dream. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. I had a dream the other night where I was told by an angel of the Lord that I would have an 11th hour ministry, and that's what I've been having. But the Lord told me it would increase, is what the Lord told me. And I saw in the dream the angel on the mountaintop. 
and I ain't going to tell you the whole details of the dream. The Lord's not revealing it to me to tell it, but accept this part. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the dream, it was a nanosecond. I mean, it was right at the dot. Excuse me. It was right at the dot of midnight, friends. It was at the midnight hour. And the Lord told me, he said, you were to sound the trumpet. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. You are to sound the, the trumpet. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That we are living in the last days. And I know we know that. We've been hearing it. But friends, what I've been discovering in the Bible for myself, even more points to it. We are about to see Jesus Christ split the eastern sky. I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus, for the everlasting, ever-living Word of God that we know to be true in our hearts. We are not to fear what the devil is trying to show the world or even trying to show and discredit the church. We are to believe and know the truth within our heart. For the truth and the truth alone to set us free. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you're watching this right now and you said, Lord, I don't know if I'm ready. I, I, Lord, I've got some things I need to get right with you right now. I need to lay things at the altar. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my house and come and live in it. Don't let the devil get a hold of me. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross, that God raised you from the dead, and that I will live forever in your kingdom. Wash me in the blood. Cleanse me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I might make heaven my home in Jesus' name. I thank you, Holy Ghost, for this word. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody just got a salvation. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just got born again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want to talk to you about real quick if you need healing or deliverance. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Shanda I command healing right now. Supernatural created miracles. Come for them. Now I feel the glory going out of my body. Go into their body. Heal them, Holy Ghost. Stretch out your hand and receive the healing power of the Holy Ghost. It's free. All you got to do, bless the Holy Ghost, is reach out your hand and receive it in Jesus' name. Now, God, deliver everybody bound up by demons. Every addiction I command it, break in Jesus' name. To loose you and let you go free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the living word of God the right and righteous word that they are delivered because he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the word of God today. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody want to be filled with the Spirit of God? I say in Jesus' name, be filled, for Jesus is a baptizer. I do love you, Lord. In the Holy Ghost. Out of your belly will flow rivers. Of living water in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you this real quick in closing. If the law was done away with, then everything is permissible. That's why they call evil good and good evil, because the law is, in their mind, done away with. But the Bible said that the king is going to rule over his people, the true king over the true ones that want to be followers of Jesus, the remnant, he will rule over them. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. He will rule over them. They want him to rule over them. If you want him to rule over and say, Jesus, rule over me. Be my Lord and King and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And uh, very soon in the next week or two, it's been delayed again, we will have the revival tent up in the air. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love the Lord Jesus. Thank you for tuning in to this broadcast today. I have preached till I have sweated my brains out. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right to me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me know what Jesus has done for you today. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you there or in the air. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.